And this is why I think that the Joe Biden FBI raid is actually a cover up. Daily Mail reports, what else are they hiding? White House claims transparency face even uh, White House claims of transparency face even more scrutiny as it's revealed National Archives was blocked from releasing statement on classified documents found at Biden's think tank. The revelation came during question, questioning of Archives General Counsel Gary Stern by top Republican James Comer. It raises questions over who stopped the release from going public. That is to say, just before the midterms, when they raided Biden's home and they, they knew he had these documents, the National Archives were barred by someone. It'd have to be either Biden or Merrick Garland. They said, do not make a statement. You are barred from doing so. That means when the midterms came, everybody, it, nobody had the opportunity to learn this. CBS News eventually reports it, and that's yeah. how we find out. And now we're actually getting some some information as to what's going on. Now there there there's more raids, there's more searches. When it can affect the Democrats. Exactly. <laughs> and this this says to me, if it's Garland or if it's Biden, they, they're covering it up. Well, if yeah. someone asked the National Archives to cover it up, for sure, 100%. Right. If the Absolutely. archives were asked not to report, they were asked to cover it up. And that means up. it was Biden or Garland. So maybe... The deep state is going after Biden, and he said, "No, no, no! Don't let him! Don't let anyone find out they're coming after me." I don't mm -hmm. believe it because they're all deep state; they're all establishment. What likely happened is they said, "We're going to use this against Trump, the documents, but we got to make sure you're clean before we make that move." So we're going to have the FBI come in and search if they can find anything, and then we'll move forward with Trump. And but then is. they inadvertently found stuff. How the story went? Yeah. When when did they raid Trump's house? When was that? In the fall was it November? Months ago, yeah. Was I'm it November? Looking it up now. It's an important question. Up. Was it before or after? August 8th. August 8th is oh, when they raided Trump's house. Over the summer. Yeah, so I, I kind of think they were like, hey, look, this is a big story. And they're trying to say, maybe, maybe they do want Biden to run. And they were like, if they go if, if they go hard on this Trump can't run for president because of these documents, we got to make sure Biden doesn't have the same problem. Lo and behold, he does. Interesting. I don't know. What do you think? Do you think it's a malicious cover-up, a beneficial cover-up? You think... Going back to the deep state thing, what other motives would the deep state have in getting rid of Biden aside from, you know, he's not good for the Democrats? I can't think of any other motives because he's doing exactly what they want them. And they don't need to, to do. get rid yeah. of him. They just need to be like, right. OK, Joe, uh, we're going to get somebody else. And I go, oh, OK. Yeah, I just don't buy the whole like, yeah, the deep state is I mean, going I, after him. I think it's his health, right? Like if they could have run him again, yeah. they would have. But like. Again, this sounds terrible, but like he doesn't seem healthy. This is a continued issue. Like the other day, er, he he just announced he's extending yeah. uh, COVID orders, and his office said May 11th. Everyone knew it, and then he told reporters May 15th. Like okay. he can't keep basic important dates in mind, right? Yeah. He's a busy guy. I guess he's got a lot going on. But like I think it's that personally, I think it's that he is not healthy enough to run again, and therefore they have to replace him. He doesn't want to. But wouldn't to. that happen internally within the Democratic Party? Would they need this, you know... Uh, not if he's going to say, drama? I'm running. I'm running. You, you cannot make me go on that platform and say I'm not okay, running. I will. You know? We'll see. Like, we'll if he see. digs his heels in, yeah. what are they going to say? Like, I, I mean, I think this has more to do with l making Trump look bad, to be honest. Hmm. It, making Trump look bad? I mean, sorry, yeah. Um, making him look better in comparison to Trump. Oh, he whole, got yeah. rated too, but his wasn't that exactly. bad. Exactly. His wasn't that bad, precisely. I think mm, that it has. Interesting. Yeah. I don't know, man. It's also confusing because like. We don't have the details. Maybe they mm -hmm. just screwed up. They were yeah. trying to cover this up. They told the National Archives not to say anything. But then CBS News got the story out. And now they're scrambling. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe that's it. Maybe Joe Biden can't run. There was that uh, mm. former Clinton aide said, this is it for him. It's going to be the end. And I'm, I'm sorry. I just, I just don't feel that way. I feel like Joe Biden could walk out on Fifth Avenue and shoot somebody in the face. <laughs> they still vote for him. <laughs> not kidding. Not kidding. Trump was right when he was talking about that. Yeah, for mm -hmm. real. The current state of American politics is, if you're in the if you're in the cult, you're in the cult. Yeah. There was a there's a really great tweet uh, I saw, and it said, "If you are on the left, you are allowed to deviate from leftist economic policy without reprisal, but you cannot deviate on gender ideology, race ideology, and that explains exactly what the left is. Mm -hmm. And it's like that's an interesting point. If you're woke, but you say something like, I don't know if universal health care could work." Nobody cares. Yeah. They're just like, oh, that's interesting. 
Right. But if you are pro universal health care and you say, hey, that woke stuff's nonsense, they call you right wing. Right. Yeah, I mean, it happens with minorities too. You saw when um, all of the Muslims in Dearborn protested against the uh, mm-hmm. sexualization mm-hmm. of children, they called them terrorists. You know, these are the same Muslims that the left pretended to defend during the war on terror, and et cetera. Now they're calling them literal terrorists because, you know, they're against woke. So I heard a story where it was like apparently some woman was at a diversity training mm-hmm. and they said, you know, what's, say your name and pronouns. She said, oh, no, thank you. I'm not religious. And then people started chuckling and then everyone refused to give pronouns. And I'm like, yeah, maybe that happened. It does kind of sound like a and then everyone clapped kind of story, mm-hmm. you know, because <laughs> oh I don't I don't see people as uh, willing to stand up. Like I said, Joe Biden could walk on a Fifth Avenue and shoot somebody and they'd still vote for him. Yeah. So I'm not I'm not convinced that the average person who is aware of what's going on with the corruption, the communism, whatever you want to call it, is willing to actually stand up and say anything. Because the, the, the story that breaks my heart, we heard the other day from uh, Matt Strickland, is that he defies these lockdown orders. He wins in court. He wins the political battle. He was right the whole time. And he said, people call him and say, what you did was great. How can I help you? And he, say, and he says, do what I did. And they go, oh, no, 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 I, I couldn't do that. I, mm-hmm. you know, oh, they'll come after me. And that, that's how it feels. Too many people are just like, no, 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 don't look at me. I'm going to stay right here where it's easy. Yeah. They think it'll pass eventually, but uh, it's only going to get worse. We've seen this throughout history. I mean, the gender pronoun thing. Uh, I've made jokes saying, like on Twitter, saying, yeah, there's going to be Republicans with pronouns in their bios in 10 years. We'll see. Oh, yeah, 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 of course. (laughs) The joke I made is that the Democratic Party is going to be hive mind singularity pod people versus transgender communists. And that'll be the Republican Party. And the Democrats will be the hive mind AI people. Yeah. And they'll be like, hive mind rights. And they'll start arguing that once you join the collective, you know, you have a right. Like if a, if a non-citizen becomes part of the collective, they retain their voting power because the collective is one one unit or something like that. Mm-hmm. And then they're going to be like, we need a new system of voting because ranked choice voting doesn't work anymore. They're going to be on like double bypass ranked choice inversion voting where, you know, who you vote for the third time gets counted against you and some weird, you know, anybody can vote. And then they're going to be like, well, he's in the hive now, so he's we are one. And that means, you know, he can he can vote and there's one vote and we vote for Joe Biden again. And that's, that's yeah, you that's vote with your feelings in those situations because yeah. you just your fe- whoever has the be- most feeling is the one that would decide <laughs> what the hive does. Yeah. Th- to, in order to vote in the future, you walk into a room, close your eyes and think real hard. and Then we record it. Trust us. We're getting the count right. <laughs> yeah. we, we, we know. Yeah, we got, we got your vote. Yeah. And then they leave and it's like, oh, I wonder. You know who's going to win, and they're like ninety nine point nine percent Joe Biden. You know, I don't think that the gender stuff is just going to get worse. You said earlier, like Chloe Cole gives me a lot of inspiration. I'm not sure if you're familiar with her story. Mm-hmm. She's like, uh, she might be nineteen at this point, but she had underwent uh, yeah, surgery, 19. like transgender surgery, mm-hmm. and had her double mastectomy, her breasts removed when she was like thirteen or fourteen. I don't want to get the numbers wrong, um, but it's right around that age. I think it's fifteen. 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 And then realized what the pharmaceutical companies were doing to her or or enabling her to do to herself for profit and Mm -hmm. uh, came out and started speaking out against it. And she's immensely popular right now with all sorts of people from all ages. So I think we went through a horrible period in the last six years of pharmaceutical overreach, in my opinion. Yeah. And and digging into these kids for money. Um, But if you look at Europe and you see how overly woke they are at you can tell that the trajectory of the U.S. is going to follow that of Europe, right? You know, they've all had these debates, the bathroom debates and everything. And that their solution, for example, for the bathroom thing is that, you know, we're going to have unisex bathrooms. So, I mean, that's just one example. But if you want to see the future of the U.S. in terms of wokeism and, and leftist ideology, you look to Scandinavia and Western Europe. So. In California. Yeah, True. California. Apparently, California is always five years ahead of the rest of the United States. Yeah. I, I, ta- I covered this uh, story a few years ago. They w- it was talking about something related to their weird policies, and it said, historically, the policies they implement there make their way to the, to the rest of the country within five years. So if you want to figure out where things are going to be in five years, look at California. Mm-hmm. And if you do, well, then any sane person is going to get out of the city, go to the middle of nowhere, and get some chickens. Because otherwise, you're going to be walking around New York, you're going to be walking around D.C., and there's going to be human feces all over the streets. And there probably already are. It's just that in San Francisco, it's way, way worse. Hmm. In Sacramento, yeah. it's worse. But that's that's coming to a neighborhood near you. Well, and I would assume all the migration that happened during the COVID lockdowns is going to mm. influence that, right? Have you ever seen these maps of like how people migrated, and a lot of them left California and left, mm. went to states you wouldn't have predicted? Like, 
we always talk about this, but Texas they bring, and, right? They they bring their ideology and their policies with them, yeah. right? They're frustrated by what's happening in their state, but not by everything. They like dislike one policy, but they're going to keep most yeah. of the others. Yep. Naturally, the country is just going to move more left in terms of socio cultural. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not so convinced. Really? Uh, yeah, I think it's going to be. So we started seeing this shift with Gen Z because leftists don't have kids; they have yours. Okay. But that 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 only goes so far when you start getting a pushback in the culture war. And I think mm-hmm. mathematically, it doesn't matter whether or not they indoctrinate kids. I don't. I think that all that matters is the birth rate. Mm-hmm. If conservatives have even one kid per family, and Democrats have none kids per family, mm-hmm. then the future, even though will be a population reduction, will be way more conservative. And then people argue, yeah, but the the woke are trying to indoctrinate those kids. Yes, but they don't exist in large enough numbers. Mm-hmm. So if there's two leftist teachers trying to indoctrinate your indoctrinate your child, then as they get older, they're dying off. Maybe they convert 10 percent. Maybe let's say they convert 40 percent of all conservative children into woke. That still means they are not replacing their own ideological selves. Right. And so mm-hmm. over a long enough period, like I, what's the conversion rate you think for a conservative kid into a woke kid? I don't think it's a particular. percent. It's probably very low. Yeah. You grow up in a like, you, you grow up in a religious conservative family. You probably become slightly libertarian as you get older, but you're still going to be somewhat conservative. And people go through phases too. I was I went through like a real uh, postmodernist. You can be whatever you believe yeah. you are phase in my twenties, and then mm-hmm. I realized the reality starts to set in. I realize oh, people will starve if we don't get resources right. from point A to point B. You know the whole I, what I believe that. is not is not good enough. You know, mm. the reality, it will slap you in the face metaphorically if you, right. if you just play the I am what I think I am game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think you were making a point about generations, right? So if Generation Z, if you're seeing like a conservative turn, usually the next generation will be more woke, right? So if you see backlash in a certain no, generation. No, 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 no. You don't think so? Uh, Pew Research shows that every generation starts skewing further and further left. But Gen Z was the first time in 100 years it actually ticked back towards okay. conservative because uh, something and, and else i read um baby boomers they were for their for that time period they were woke you know they were against the vietnam war and etc but then generation x that was the backlash generation but uh yeah. well uh, gen, gen like they're, they're all more progressive yeah on everything like e- boomers were resistant to gay marriage gen yeah. xers were more accepting of it millennials were completely accepting of it and then resulting in a favorable cultural environment to make to legalize or i should say to uh, codify, uh, not even codify, to rule in the Supreme Court that it just is. Yeah, and I think it went from 20% in the 90s to like 80% now. I mean, support it's, for yep. It's Game considered Rangers. one of the fastest shifting cultural issues at all time. Crazy. I wonder how Alpha is going to turn out. I mean, if well, Zoomers are this way, then. It's not about how they turn out. Mm-hmm. It's about who has the kids. Oh, yeah. And a, yeah, conservatives you have more kids than liberals, mm-hmm. and liberals are now more likely to sterilize and more likely to abort their children. So it's only a matter of time. I don't, you know, people talk about all the politics and they're like, yeah, but they're in schools and they're indoctrinating. And I'm just like, doesn't matter. Math, you're not going to change it. Like, over a long enough period of time, it's like saying, you know, you go to, you go to a casino. Cause I was making the, the I said if I was going to make a bet on, you know, Kamala Harris, people were like, Tim's got a gambling problem. Because I, I always do the gambling analogy. But uh, if you go to a casino, the house has an edge. Like, how is it that you can play all these games? The house always wins because in blackjack, they have a 0.5% higher chance of winning. Mm-hmm. That, it, that means you can win a million dollars. It doesn't matter. Over the year, they win 0.5% of all of those bets statistically. And that's all that matters. And that's what I'm talking about with wokeness. Mm. They can do whatever they want. They can indoctrinate this kid and this kid. They can get Greta Thunberg up on the big TV. But over a long enough period of time, their attrition rate is just too high. If they want to abort their kids and stare, look, aborting their kids was one thing, mm-hmm. right? The uh, leftists, liberals are substantially more likely to get abortions than Christians, conservatives, etc. And that right there is a hard mathematical fact, which is why many people were saying for a while that the future is Muslim, because Muslims have even more kids than Christians, right. and th- that's, 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 that's the number. That's all that matters. Mm-hmm. However, now liberals are sterilizing their kids. Mm-hmm. So that means it's almost like a retroactive removal, removal from future gene pools. Basically... If you go back to the 1990s and check abortion rates, you're going to be like, we can do the math. Liberals were aborting at this rate, conservatives at this rate. You're going to see more conservatives. Guess what? We are. 
Conservatives are having more kids. Liberals are having less kids. Why? Because liberals are aborting their babies. So in the early 2000s, conservatives were having, I think it was like 2.05 kids on average, and liberals were having like 1.73. Now what do we see? Gen Z, slightly more conservative in some areas, but okay. fairly comparable to millennials. Now, here's what they didn't track for. When they were talking about abortion, they, or they weren't talking about abortion, they said, do, do liberals have kids, do conservatives have kids? And, and the answer was conservatives have more, why? They were probably banging at the same rate or similar rates, but liberals were having abortions, reducing that number. Mm. Now add to the fact that those kids from the 2000s mm -hmm. who are 23 today have a higher likelihood of being sterilized, being uh, uh, chemically castrated or transitioning or just outright not wanting to have kids as per leftist ideology. So you add that and now those people will not have children. So the, the, the birth rate on the left is going to go down further. Personally, I'm not a fan of any of that stuff. I think people should have families and they'll enjoy it. But if the left doesn't want to have kids, that's the future that they've built. Yeah. There it is. Yeah, ran it over. makes sense. Makes sense. I didn't know any of that actually. It assumes, um, you know, a stable system, peaceful system. Um, it doesn't. Well, because slavery is real too. Like human slavery. If 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 a liberal society were to go full militant and just start killing and enslaving children, um, then they then it would be like does you know then that would have won. You tell me. You're telling me that you think <clears throat> that if the, the 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 circumstances in the United States become substantially more arduous than it's then liberals will do better no i think the ideology is destined for failure that personal ideology of cutting up kids and making them take their penis off when they're 12 like that's not going to work and i'm not species. saying and i'm not saying that's like in 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 massive numbers in the millions it's in the thousands maybe even tens of thousands and it may be reversing because of what we're seeing with people like chloe cole but what i'm saying is if you make a, a, an easy, comfortable system, you will start seeing more liberals and leftists, but they want gluttony more than conservatives want gluttony, that many conservatives do, so they abort and sterilize their kids. But then you give them hardship, and conservatives are substantially more likely to survive that hardship because of meritocracy, personal responsibility, and things like that. So if it does become a dictatorship, all that means is more liberals will struggle to succeed. Maybe. I was just thinking of, will succeed. I was thinking of the Soviet Union because that was a real liberal uprising. They were all like f wacky, radical leftists, and uh, they just killed everyone else and took control physically. So enforced the ideology, if not for other countries around Earth. And, and know, what won out in the end it. was, I wouldn't Money. call it. Yeah, it was oligarchy. Yeah, but Mob then rule and that control. period of the '90s where you know oligarchs ruled everything. You know they liked Western liberalism, but now there's backlash, right? And now they want to revive the Soviet Union in Russia. I mean, Stalin is the most popular figure in Russia, and they yeah literally want to go back to the Soviet Union. Really? So, so, yeah. How is that happening? Who wants that, and what do they want exactly? Well, I mean, if you look at polling data, Western polling data, Stalin is the number one, you know, most popular figure. And um, if you talk to Russians these days, you know, they want they uh, want to go back to the days of the Soviet Union because that period of the 90s was just so horrible for the Russian people. And then Putin changed everything when he came in in 2000. You know, Russia was declining. Economy was really bad. And then, you know, slowly he reindustrialized and then changed the economy for the better. And now, you know, Putin has been very good for the Russian people. Well, I mean, you, and maybe you can speak to this, but don't most Russian people not want what modern Western values are, right? Yeah, no, they don't. So I mean, they, they admire the West because of, you know, Hollywood and everything. Of, the, of Western? Yeah, maybe? because of the cultural power that the West has, but uh, they are completely against uh, Western liberal values. In fact, there was a, a bill that was just passed where uh, they expanded the anti-LGBT law that they had. And this was, you know, uh, across the board, every party agreed with it. They were like, no, we're not going to have this... Uh, uh, LGBT gender ideology propaganda in Russia, you know, that's for the West. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's hardening them even more. So I saw an interview with Putin, uh, with a bunch of college kids, and they were like, you could see they wanted him to be like, yes, we are now a liberal democracy, but he wasn't. He was staying hard. And, they, yeah. and then uh, they were like, what should we, what, uh, senior or whatever they called him, Putin, what should I do as a man in Russia? And Putin was like, you should learn to cook. 
And he was like, ah, everyone laughs. He's like, no, as a real man, a Russian man, there's like this misogynist energy behind it all. Mm. And that, that stood out to me that there's this intense like misogyny in the Russian and yeah. in in that, in that guy and that guy. And Putin still was like, no, no, you should learn to cook because the yeah. economy is about to go to crap. He didn't say that part, <laughs> but that's what he was saying. It's, like, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a very macho culture. I mean, I've been to Moscow um, and then you see it in the UFC as well. Look at how all of the Russian fighters and everything. You know, they're doing really, really well. They're dominating the MMA world. Mm. And that's part of their culture. You know, men should be men and women should be women. You know, they women embrace their femininity. They don't reject it and they don't try to be more masculine. Like, you know, it's uh, it is here. When you were saying that they want to bring back, people want to bring back the Soviet Union, do they want, do they know what they want or is it just that they want something better than what they have and they're looking well, at? Well, it's actually um, uh, older Russians that experienced the Soviet Union that want it back the most. So it's interesting because it's the opposite, right? Because in the U.S., you have young millennials that are more socialist. And then the older people here, uh, they're like anti-socialist, anti-communist. But in Russia, younger people, they're more into, you know, liberal values. But then the older people who experience communism, they want the Soviet Union back. So it's like the complete opposite. Is this derived through polls and things? Or polls, is- yeah, mostly through polls. And then, you know, um, I, I don't necessarily go with like lived experiences, but that was my experience in Russia as oh, well. How long did older. you live in I was Russia? there for a, a month. You know, I was there for work, but uh, it was a uh, enlightening experience because it killed whatever progressivism and leftism I had in me. Because it was a totally different culture. I'd never really gone elsewhere aside from, you know, like Western Europe. So... Um, it's a very anti-progressive, anti-woke culture. I mean, it's pretty much built in. It's very interesting going yeah. to Russia. You said yeah. it killed the, the wokeism out of you or like a stra- Whatever progressivism I had inside of me, you know, um, from, you know, like the Bernie days, it was just completely gone. Um, I became less, I became more politically incorrect, you know. But see, the thing with Bernie, he wasn't... Uh, he wasn't woke. Yeah, it wasn't the same thing. He yeah. Was, he did that interview, that, that famous interview where he was like, you got to secure the borders. You got you to secure the borders. Yeah. And then um, they, the World Socialist website call him a nationalist capitalist. Yeah. Because he wanted to shut the borders down. And these people are global socialists. Yeah. Mm. And then he changed his whole uh, shtick, right, in 2020. And that's why I think he lost the primary. Because, you know, he went full on the id poll and the uh, gender ideology and the, all that stuff. So it's like, yeah, that's why he destroyed himself. But yep. um, so it sounded like a weirdo. Yeah. And regular people were like, I don't know what that's all about. This guy's crazy. It went from unite the working class to identity politics yep. in 2020. That's how they do it. Yeah. That's how they do it with Occupy Wall Street. They do it with Bernie Sanders. Yeah. I feel like we didn't mention it, but it would be remiss not to point out that universities are also not quite as popular as they were. Like, you hear this all the time. Yeah. People say you send your kid to university and they move more left, even if they were raised in a conservative family. Mm-hmm. But studies are showing, I mean, especially with COVID, we saw so many people opt not to return to college and feel mm-hmm. like it wasn't worth it. People are aware of how much of a financial burden it is to well, take Well, even Elon Musk debt. is saying college is useless. And, yeah. you know, if well, you want to work at Tesla, you don't need to have a bachelor's degree. Right, and this is more and more thought. Yeah. Also, like, if I'm going to take on however much amount of debt to not make that much money versus someone who goes mm-hmm. into a trade or any other thing mm-hmm. who gets a head start who is making more money than you are even after your four-year degree it doesn't make any sense uh the national clearinghouse put out this study uh, released from uh, enrollment from last year and they found that the enrollment was d- down across the board master's degrees any program definitely down among undergraduates but it's uh significantly down among women for the mm. first time in a really long time which i find interesting yeah we've known for a while that men are declining fewer men are enrolling in college than women but now just in the last year i can't say it's a full-on trend but you saw uh twice as many women didn't return to college wow. didn't enroll for the first time i think I wonder, ever i wonder what it is you know with like uh Elon Musk and many others, I think Peter Thiel talking about how college is useless, mm-hmm. is, is we often said, or, or the belief was, the reason men weren't going to school, going to college was because they were lazy or they were living in their parents' basements and things like that. I'm wondering if dudes just figured it out. Yeah, I think and, they did. And women are continually under this social pressure where they're like, you've got to go to school and get a degree so you can be a CEO because mm-hmm. of patriarchy. And you yeah. have to prove yourself. You well, have to uh, prove that you are just as good as all the men in your class by getting the degree. Whereas men don't necessarily feel that same kind of pressure and they are capable of doing all kinds of things. Not that women aren't, but they are, well, like, I'll just pursue this thing over here. I also think traditional learning environments aren't suited for most men, right? Mm-hmm. Like, it's not typical. I mean, we didn't do this for a long time to have you. you also, sit at employers a desk. are also saying that uh, college graduates are not prepared adequately mm-hmm. for you know working and everything. That, yeah, 
it's useless. It's just a holding pattern. Yeah. I mean, at one point, academics, like universities and schools, they really were sort mm -hmm. of interesting places. They prepared you, you to work. Right, you but know? I don't think that's true anymore. I mean, I went to a four-year university and I was grateful for the experience, but I knew so many people who enrolled in master's programs because they didn't want to be adults yet. Yeah, I'll, and, I'll, and they also say that um, college graduates lack critical thinking skills mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because they're taught to memorize. I mean, that's the American education system, especially in college. You're not rewarded for thinking critically and analytically. Mm -hmm. Thanks for watching this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. and become a member over at Timcast.com for uncensored members-only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out. And we'll see you all next time.